everybody. Welcome back. It's Sherry here from Sherry Makes Stuff. And today we are finally going to talk about color theory. This is something I had promised a couple of cast members for a while that I was going to do. So um, I thought, why wait any longer? Let's do it before we get any further along with our construction and that sort of thing. For anybody who's still struggling or for anybody who's ever wondered or if you've ever had any questions about it, hopefully this will clear things up. So um, I'm going to talk about it in basic terms and then I will talk about it as far as when it comes to fabrics and how we can think about fabrics. So um, without any further ado, let me grab my marker and we will continue. Okay. This may end up being kind of a long video. I'll try to cut it down. Um, I do do this lecture all the time with my students and it ends up taking up quite a significant amount of time. So I'll try to run through it fairly quickly, um, but it's a lot of information. And this is kind of my favorite thing in the world. Like I love color theory. I may love this better than I love um, making things, honestly, just talking about color theory and thinking about it, because it really is kind of the essence of everything. So what is color theory? Well, to answer that, and I'm sorry if I'm shaking the camera a little bit, I'm solo tonight. Uh, Reggie's asleep, not playing cameraman for me. So this is just me here at my desk. So I'll try not to shake the boat for you too much. Um, but um, so what is color? Let's start with that. And color is nothing more than white light coming out of the sky um, and coming down from the sun and bouncing off of objects. So we have a ball here. Work with me here. It's a ball. And the light bounces off the object and the object absorbs a lot of the um UV rays that are coming down from the sun. It's absorbing most of them and it is only bouncing back. Let's say this is a red ball. So we would say the ball is red. When we're referring to the general color of something, that is the local color. So that's not taking into account any logos that might be on it or any highlights or any shadows. The general color of the object is red. So if this ball is red, it is absorbing everything except red. It's kind of, you know, white light has all of the colors in it. And if this ball is absorbing everything and only reflecting back red into our eyes, to kind of absorb and to interpret. And our eyes, right, um, absorb these things and um, interpret it with the rods and cones. This is how we see things in three dimension is because we can interpret color. Um, it's why we can see a tiger in the wild and a gazelle may not see the tiger uh, because the stripes break up the body, right, and causes it to kind of, you know, fall away, the, the body of the tiger kind of falls away into the foliage because a gazelle doesn't have the range of colors that we have, um, you know, uh, available to them. Most animals see color very differently than we do. There's actually a lot of theory out there and a lot of question about there if every human sees color exactly the same. There are theories that, you know, women, it's pretty much proven at this point that women are pretty much generally accepted that women see more colors naturally than men do. Um, that's not to say that men can't learn to see more colors. You can't be trained to see more colors because you absolutely can. If As long as you're not true red, green, colorblind, as a general rule, you can learn to see more colors in your color spectrum. So that's a skill that you can gain. Um, so um, the trouble that artists have is how do we reinterpret this color? How do we recreate this color in a consistent way. And we've come up with various color systems. So some of these color systems are like your television or your computer monitor 
or your phone. Um, that's using RGB. That's red, green, and blue. And it's uh, pixels that are in that equipment. And they're mixing together in various ways to create the visible color spectrum or try to recreate the visible color spectrum in a believable, reliable way. Um, your printer, if you have an inkjet printer, it's probably using CMYK, which is cyan, magenta, um, yellow, and black. And uh, it is using those colors and mixing them together in various amounts to try to recreate the visible spectrum. So that's what we're trying to do as artists and as creators is we're trying to recreate the visible spectrum. And so um, to do that in art and in uh, the creative ventures, um, we generally use what is referred to as a 12-step color wheel. So a 12-step color wheel um, Sounds kind of complicated, but it's really not. Um, so let me zoom in on this a little bit more. So I didn't have a big piece of paper ready for you. So we'll work with this little piece of um, photo paper that I had on hand. So what is a 12-step color wheel? And you know what? Actually, that's not true. I'm going to dig out a bigger piece of paper. I need, I need more real estate. So hold the phone. Okay. All right. I'm back with some bigger paper so we can keep writing. And I brought sh several sheets so we can write and draw a little bit. Now, this is going to be quick and dirty color theory. This is not as detailed as I would get into with like a painting student or, um, you know, one of my art students. So this is going to be quick and dirty just so we can kind of basically understand the colors and how they relate to each other. Um, so we start with a, a color wheel. Um, and we like to arrange it in a wheel because, oops, got my little divot there in my sewing table that messed me up, but that's okay. Um, we like to arrange it in a wheel because it's a way for us to understand the colors and have them kind of out in front of us so we can see them and understand them. So we start with the primary colors. And you probably learned this in middle school or maybe in high school. The primary colors are called as such because the theory is um, that you can't mix anything together to get these colors. These colors just are. Uh, they just exist. And those colors are yellow, red, and blue, right? Um, I always tell my students to arrange yellow up towards the top. And red and blue can be to either side. And I'll tell you why. You could think of color as kind of a gradient. Some colors are lighter and kind of going more towards white. Some colors are darker and going more towards gray. Let me explain what I mean by that. Put down a fresh sheet of paper and I just happened to get some thread out. So this is white, gray, and black. It's a very simple gradient that I have for you in these threads. And you can see how, right, we start at the very, very light, we go to kind of a mid-tone, and then we go to this much darker tone at the end, right? All fine and dandy. Well, you can do the same thing with color. So here are my, here's my yellow, here's an orange, here's a red, and here's a, here's a red violet. So as we go down, you can see how this is very light. It's very similar in tone. Like if we were to take all the color away from this photograph or this image, um, you would see that, right, this is very close in tone to this white, where this is starting to become closer to the grays. And then as we get closer to violet, we start to get closer to black. So I always arrange my color wheel with yellow up towards the top because it's the closest to the lighter tone. And as we go around the color wheel, we start to get closer to black and we can start to see that closer to black in tone, like this is, and we can start to see that gradient emerge as we look at the color wheel. All right, so let's, let's continue to build our color wheel and hopefully this will make more sense as we go along. Okay, so we we'll start with red, yellow, red, and blue. Yellow is up at the top because it's closest to white. Um, the next set of colors is our secondary colors. And the theory here is that you take two primary colors, you mix them together, and you get a corresponding secondary color. 
So yellow and blue mixed together make green. Blue and red together make purple or violet. When I'm talking about the color spectrum, I like to say violet because we are recreating color. We are recreating light. We are recreating a scientific concept. And that's the scientific word for that color. So I like to use violet. If you say purple, you're not incorrect. And then red and yellow together are orange. All right. So that's six colors. We're halfway there on our 12-step color wheel. We're almost done. Super simple, right? If you can remember the primaries, you can figure out the secondaries. If you can figure out the secondaries, you're, you're hitting a home run. Because the third um, set of colors are the tertiary colors. Now the tertiary colors sit in between the primary and the neighboring secondary color. And this is the easiest naming convention in the world. Whoever came up with this wanted to take the day off the next day. It must have been a Friday. Because literally all you have to do is take the primary color, it's neighboring, secondary, and that's the name of your color. So this becomes yellow-orange. This becomes red-orange. You always name the primary color first. This becomes red-violet. This becomes blue-violet. And this is blue-green. And this is yellow-green. Notice I'm not saying aqua, or I'm not saying turquoise, or I'm not saying maroon, or I'm not saying any of these other colors. Those are um, fashion colors. Those are designer colors. Um, they're, and they're very imprecise. We could argue forever the difference between teal, aqua, and turquoise, right? And and if you have 10 people the difference, no, no two people would give you the same answer, right? Pretty much in general. So uh, those are imprecise colors. But if I say blue-green, then I mean it is literally between blue and green on the color spectrum. Now there's a range in here, right? Some of these blue greens are going to be closer to blue. Some are going to be closer to green. That's where you get things like teal and, you know, and turquoise and, and right. Like that's where all these imprecise names come from, right? So there, there's a range in here. The one thing that drives me crazy is when I get a lot of, oh, I, I, I don't know what colors to wear out at, out at festival being on cast because, you know, so many colors are taken away from me. Literally the only color that is taken away is is kind of down here right like like don't wear the purples look at all the other colors that you have you can choose from and all the different color combinations that you can make out of these different colors right when you think about it there are nine different colors and their variants that you can make out of them because you can also you can tint them you can tone them you can shade them what do i mean by that well you can have right a blue that's kind of a dark color or you can have kind of the same shade of blue. This is kind of a going towards blue green, right? So it's somewhere in here. And then you can also have it where it's got white added to it. So it's a little lighter in tone. It's not a different color. It's still kind of the same blue green. It's just a lighter tone. What the dye maker has done is they've just added white to that color. And so they've bumped up the, the tint of it, right? So, right, you can, you can have one that's subtly a little bit more like look at this range that happens in here right there's all kinds of different subtle subtle variations of all of these tones so don't feel like you're trapped right don't feel like uh, it's just not true it's just not true there's there's all kinds of colors that you can pick from i hear that a lot and i, and I just don't know where that comes from um and i think it's probably just inexperience with color and with looking at it like this way so hopefully seeing it like this makes you realize oh my goodness there's like all kinds of colors i can choose from Okay, so now that I have this color wheel, I can start to understand some of the relationships that colors have together. There are different color systems or different color relationships um, that we often refer to um, when we're looking at color. Um, I'm over here looking for a colored marker and it looks like I found one. Good. Okay, 
So there are different color systems out there and you can use these as guidelines. Don't use these as hard and fast rules. We're in the Elizabethan times, like Elizabethan costuming. These people loved color and they wore color like crazy. Like you don't want your costumes to be too matchy matchy with the color. That is not Elizabethan at all. Go look at some portraits. They were all over the place when it came to their color. Um, so, you know, they wanted to be bright and gaudy. They were showing themselves off. They were showing off what they had. And maybe, you know, that one skirt was all you could afford or that length of, of wool was all you could afford or whatever. So don't, don't think it, don't limit yourself, right? Don't limit yourself in terms of what looks nice together. Use this kind of information to help you be more creative, not less creative. Okay, so let's talk about some of these color systems. So there's there's various color systems that designers use to try and help them organize their colors. So there's um, what we call complementary colors. Those are colors directly across each other on the color wheel. So for ex example, yellow and violet. There's split complementary. Sorry, I can't write and talk at the same time. My students will tell you that. So for split complementary, instead of going from yellow to violet, we stop and we go on either side of the violet. That's a split. All right, so we split complement. So our example here then, Instead of only having two colors, we have three colors. So yellow, red, violet, plus blue, violet. You have um, triads. A triad is three colors equidistant from each other. So you pick a color. I'm going to stick with yellow just for the sake of simplicity. You skip three, you go to the next color. You skip three, you go to the next color, and there's your triad. So my example here is red, yellow, and blue. Right? That's my primaries. Your secondaries, that's another that's another triad. These are colors that that harmonize together. They work well together. They have a relationship with each other. All right? Um, you can, there are a couple, so tri means three. There are also tetrads. Tetrads, there's a couple of them. There's one where, uh, they're just, they're just, um, sets of complementary colors. That's probably the easiest way to think about it. So yellow and violet and, um, let's see red, orange, and blue, green. There's another set, right? Like it's just sets of complementary colors, sets that work together, yellow and violet, blue and orange, right? Like there's, there's all kinds of different combinations. So let's say, um, yellow and violet. Um, actually I like blue and orange, right? That's another set of complementary colors across the color wheel from each other, right? So um, that's really all you're doing is you're just kind of figuring out the relationship. Think in terms of the character of these colors too, right? Color has a character to it. Um, you think there's a whole musical genre set aside to the blues, right? When you're sad. Um, if you're envious, you're green with envy. Um, if you're if you're not very courageous and you're kind of scared and, and cowardice, you're yellow. Um, there's all kinds of relationships of color. We tend to think of yellows, oranges, reds as hot or warm colors because they remind us of the sun. They remind us of warm things. We tend to think of purples and blues as cool colors because they remind us of things like shadows and um and, uh, you know, and ice and water and cold things like that and snow. So think about that. Does your character have some relationship to temperature? Does your character have some kind of relationship to, you know, a certain time of year? Fall, you might think, you know, more of these kinds of colors. Maybe not the yellows and the yellow oranges. Like these might be more spring and summer. 
right? Where these might be more fall, right? These might be more winter, right? Like think about this, right? Think about the different time frames um, that you're trying to, you know, denote or, you know, are you a youthful character versus, you know, a older character? An older character might wear this darker color where a younger character might wear the pastel of it, right? They might wear a lighter color. So, um, you know, think in terms of that as well. Okay. Um, you don't want bright, saturated neon colors like this pink would be a no-go. Not because pink isn't period or anything like that. Um, it's just, it's too bright. It's too saturated. Um, this is clearly a man-made color, right? Whereas something like this mauve color would it be a little bit more on point, right? Um, so think about that too. Think about that character in your color and how they work together. Okay, so I've pulled together some colors for you or some fabrics for you so you can kind of visualize what these look like because that's all color theory. But what does this actually look like when it comes to color? So here is the color wheel that I've built for you. And I love this purple and I will tell you why in a minute. See how this starts to go towards darker, right? Starts very, very light, like white, and it starts to, as a gradient, it starts to go towards the darker color. That is what I was talking about. All right, this is a close approximation of a color wheel based on scraps that I had kind of laying around. Let me move that up in frame a little bit better. Now, I love talking about this fabric, um, and I want to just kind of bring it up for just a second because this fabric has some unique properties to it. So let me do this. This fabric is silk, um, and it is woven in a very special way. So if you remember, we talked about woven fabric, um, and so if I were sitting here on the loom, right, and I'm sitting here, um, these threads uh, that are on the loom and they're under tension, these are called the warp threads. And then the threads that the weaver weaves in and out, right? Those are the weft threads. Remember that? Okay. So here we have, this is the selvage edge. So the edges are always the selvages. The selvage edge is the finished edge on the end of a bolt of fabric. See how that's the finished edge, right? So the bolt would be here and we would be cutting the yardage off this way. So this is the the, the selvage edge, right? This would be the, the width of the fabric and then the fabric would have whatever length to it. Notice how I've picked these threads apart. Notice how it looks purple, but look at what's actually going on. This has two different kinds of threads, two different color threads woven into it. Can you see that? There are, let me get this in frame, move it. Let's try not to bump the camera. So do you see how it is actually just made up of these blue threads? It's kind of cobalt blue threads and these bright candy red threads. This is called visual mixing. So this fabric is actually not purple. This fabric is actually made up of blue threads on one on the warp, right? So these are my warp, or no, I'm sorry, blue threads on the, uh, or red threads on the warp. I can do this, I promise. Sorry, it's really late at night, so I'm starting to get a little tired. Um, so the warp threads are red, and the weft threads are blue. And when woven together, they visually mix. This is how printed images work. Um, these colors visually mix together. If you look really, really close, you'll see pixels. The same thing with um, you know, images online. If you zoom way, way in, eventually you're going to see all these different colored pixels that uh, you know break apart and become very abstracted. But when you zoom out of these pictures, right, they look like um, 
you know, beautiful, you know, millions of colors. And it's just that the colors are visually mixing together. Our eyes are not seeing red and blue. They're mixing them together and creating this color in our brains. This brain, this color does not exist. Our brain is manufacturing that. Isn't that cool? Like it's a little trick of the brain that your brain's doing. And so when this fabric moves, you can see how it's got a different character to it. Isn't that cool? So this is, this is called shot silk because it's shot through with a separate color. And so in the folds, you can see the different character and the different colors. So this is a visual mixing and it's just an optical illusion that creates this kind of purpley color. So right that's some some fabrics are like that most fabrics that you'll run into will be um the same warp and weft color all right um so that's visual mixing all right so now you can think in terms of you know what do i do with this how do i how do i get rid of this or how do i get rid of this how do i use this let me start that over so, um, you know, now it comes down to how do I use this information? What do I do with this? Right? Well, think about your character. Think about things that might appeal to them. Think about what your job is. Um, if you're not the queen or the purple princess or, you know, something like that, purple's not going to be your bag. So we're going to get rid of that. Um, if you're not royalty, um, then this, blue violet is not really going to be okay either. So I'm going to take that out. Um, this red violet isn't too bad because it's going more towards red. So I'll go ahead and leave that in. So look at all the different variations that we still have available to us, right? And now we can use some of these different colors. So maybe, uh, maybe I really liked, um, you know, some of these like green colors, right? Look at how nice those look together. This is called an analogous color scheme. If I pick colors that are next to each other on the color wheel, this can create a very harmonious look and can be really beautiful. Remember I said you want five colors and three textures, right? Five colors, three textures. So, um, it ends up being pretty easy to do this fabric here. I'm calling this my red orange. I actually don't have a lot of orange fabric come to find out, but look how this is actually two different, two different colors, right? It's kind of got this yellow in here too. So this fabric alone would be two colors, right? So if you had your shirt, that would be three colors. Um, you know, if you had a skirt, let's say I like this red orange, maybe I want to put it with, what do I like? Ooh, that's kind of cool. So let's put it with this blue green kind of color for the skirt. So this is my bodice. This is my skirt. Maybe I'll do a little of this yellow orange down at the bottom for a stripe. There are my five colors. One, two, three, four. My shirt is five. Easy, right? Don't forget your shirt. Don't forget your leather goods, your hats, your, your belts, your, your belt pouches, right? All of that counts, right? So think about this stuff, right? How, how can we incorporate this? How can I make this look good? Oh, and texture, right? One, two, three, your shirt's going to be four textures, you know, the fourth texture, right? Like on and on and on. So it's really easy to do this. If you think about this, sorry, if you can hear my cat, she's desperate for attention. You can tell I'm one of those abusive pet parents. Cause I won't let her in my studio because she will eat string. And then we got to pull it out of her butt later. Sorry, it's too much information, but that's why I don't let her in my studio. Okay, um, so I hope this was helpful to you, and I hope that this made sense. Um, if you would like me to put these scraps together on a ring and bring those to rehearsals, cast members only. Sorry, I haven't been saying that all along to my non-cast member viewers, um, but if you would like me to put these on a key ring and bring these so that you can see them all, let me know. I'm happy to do that for you. Um, but hopefully this little walk down color theory lane kind of helped you out a little bit, right? Um, you know, think in terms of, right, what do you think when you see red and green together? Maybe it's a little Christmassy. All right, how do we change that up? What if we do this red and this blue green, right? Now it's not as Christmassy. What if we put some orange with that, right? 
less Christmassy. What if I do the green as a trim on the blue green, right? Now I'm not getting that Christmassy thing anymore because I've got something that's kind of separating them, right? Or this, which I like that red orange better, right? Like that could be cool. Oh, textures. Can you use, see how these are kind of textured? Can you use various textures together? The short answer is yes. Um, there are rules to that. Um, so we can talk about that, you and I specifically. Um, come, come find me about that. Or if you think that would be a useful video, let me know. And I could talk about how to mix textures and patterns together. Um, you know, like that. Like you can see these different patterns that are on here. All right. So um, let me know again in the comments if you found this useful. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. I know I say it all the time, but it really helps me out a lot um, if you subscribe to my channel and if you like it and if you view it. Um, it, it it's YouTube's algorithms. Um, it helps my videos so it shows up in search engines. Um, and that just helps me in the long run. So I would really appreciate it if you would um, do that for me. Um, that would be great. If you haven't already. If you have already, thanks. You're awesome. A plus for the day. All right. If you have any more questions on color theory, let me know. Um, but the video is getting a little long, so I think I'm going to end it here. Um, thanks for watching, and I will talk to you soon. Have a good day. To our eyes to kind of absorb and to interpret. You skip three, you go to the next color. You skip three, you go to the next color. And there's your triad. See how this starts to go towards darker, right? Starts very, very light.